Hello. In this Java tutorial, we're going to learn about scope and lifetime of variables in memory. Before watching this video, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of methods in Java. For more information on that topic, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner of this screen. What is scope and lifetime? Scope determines where in a program that a variable can be accessed. Lifetime determines when a variable or object is created and when it is destroyed in memory. The scope and lifetime of a variable is determined by where it is declared, not where it is initialized. Sometimes we declare and initialize variables on the same line, sometimes we don't. Let's take a look at this class. We have our main method here, and we have four variables, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D are all local variables because they are local to this method. Int A is declared here at the top of the method, and its scope is anywhere inside this method, and its lifetime is from where it is declared until the end of the method. Int B is declared inside this block of code here. So it's created when this block of code runs, and it's destroyed when this block of code completes. Here we have int c that is declared as part of this for loop. c is declared when we begin the for loop, and it is not destroyed until all cycles of the for loop are complete. int d is created inside this block of code that's part of the for loop. Int D is created every time we run a cycle of the for loop, and is destroyed every time we end that cycle. Then it's recreated again when we run the cycle again. Let's take a look at this other class. We have a main method, and we have another method. We're going to start tracing it out. So we're going to declare A, then initialize A. So that puts A and its value 3 on the stack here. Now we're going to call another method, and when another method runs, it'll run this code inside. Notice A becomes grayed out. That's because A is out of scope. It's not available in another method, since local variables are only available in the methods where they are created. However, it still exists on the stack, so the data's there, it's just not accessible right here. We finish up another method, and then we're back to our main method. Now we see A is now back in scope. Finally, we end the main method, so A is destroyed and removed from the stack. Next, let's take a look at this class. We'll start by looking at method 2. Method 2 has a parameter called name. Parameters are variables that are defined in the method declaration. We have to pass a value to them any time we call the method. Parameters are created when the method runs, and their scope is anywhere inside the method. Their lifetime begins when the method is first called, and ends when the method call is complete. Now let's take a look at this class variable here. Class variables are also known as static fields, and we declare them as static when we create the variables. Class variables are created the first time we use the class or we create an instance of the class. Class variables are accessible in all static or non-static methods in the entire class. The class and all instances of the class share one value for each class variable. So if you change it one place, you change the value everywhere. Now let's take a look at this instance variable here. Instance variables, which are also known as non-static fields, do not have the word static in their declaration. There is a different copy of every instance variable in every instance that we create of a class. So if we create five instances of the scope and lifetime class, there will be five separate copies of the B instance variable, and they may each have their own values. Instance variables are created when an instance of the class is created and destroyed when that instance is destroyed. They are only accessible in non-static methods. So we can tell this is a non-static method because it doesn't have this word static there. This method is static, so we can't access instance variables. 
To see the next video in this curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower left hand corner of your screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right hand corner of your screen.